guys and welcome back to the channel. Thanks to the team over at Show Z, we're going to be taking an early look at the brand new Metagate Haiku Transformers 4 Age of Extinction Triple Changing Drift. Now for those of you looking to add this guy to the collection, I'll of course be sure to pack a pre-order link down in the description box below and this has got to be one of the most ambitious third party live action movie figures that we've ever seen. This guy is a triple changer, he will convert from a Bugatti Veyron into a robot and then into a helicopter which is really crazy especially considering considering that some of those Transformers 4 characters weren't the easiest to translate into action figures and considering that I'm a massive fan of the live action movies I'm actually really excited to take a look at this guy. Now we'll kickstart things off with how I received mine that in the Bugatti Veyron mode and overall this actually doesn't look too bad at all. I think in terms of design it's near enough spot on to what we saw in the movie but considering that he does have an incredibly complex conversion there will be quite a few fair panel lines scattered throughout him so as we actually take a look here at the details I think the entire front of the Bugatti looks awesome. We get this amazing electric blue metallic paint for the front and you'll also see that present from the sides as well as the back and of course this section. I think that all looks cool. The rims too have got this wicked metallic silver and blue detail going on as well and I absolutely love the smoky transparent plastic that we have here for the windscreen. Really does help to conceal some of that interior robot mode kibble and overall this guy is actually pretty hefty. From what I can tell the entire hood is die cast as so is the roof section and I also believe there's some die car scattered here in the back where the engine block would be as well as here for these mud flaps and you can see even the back of the vehicle looks so nicely done with some of that vent detail and the paint also is really impressive. Now this guy does have a retractable spoiler as you guys can see at the moment I do have it deployed. If I'm going to be honest this is an absolute pain in the butt to get out. It is really wedged in there so hence why I have actually taken it out for the purposes of this review but just to showcase how he does look with this here retracted you simply just push it down and it will snap into place and undeniably it definitely does create for a much sleeker and almost cooler look for drift when in the Bugatti mode. I think the headlights look cool. You can also see we've got the window wipers. Overall just a very nicely done looking vehicle. The wheels are in fact rubberized so he can roll along the ground with absolute ease and there is an almost movie masterpiece feel to this guy. He really does feel a lot more premium when in comparison to some of the other third party pieces that I've handled in the collection and I also think the scaling to what we would expect from a real life Bugatti is pretty much on point. So in terms of a comparison, here we have the Age of Extinction Haigu compared alongside the Unique Toys Peru Kill Age of Extinction Lockdown, which is supposed to be a Lamborghini Aventador. Now I'm not a car expert, but I'm almost certain the scale between these guys is pretty accurate. A Lambo is a lot longer when in comparison to a real life Bugatti Veyron, and I think in terms of an almost third party scale, these actually don't look too bad being displayed alongside each other at all. And yeah, granted the Lambo does look a little cleaner as there are nowhere near as many panel lines on this guy when in comparison to the Bugatti but what you guys have to bear in mind is that this transforms from just a vehicle into a robot whereas this thing will turn into a helicopter as well so definitely some black magic going on here with this Age of Extinction Drift but overall I think these look awesome and these have undeniably got to be some of the coolest vehicles that we ever saw in some of those live action Michael Bay movies especially that Bugatti Veyron. I actually think it almost bankrupted the studio hence why they had to change him into a Mercedes for the fifth film but just such a beautiful car and the Lamborghini Aventador as well just looks so awesome. And now for the transformation, something which I don't actually believe we ever saw Transformers 4 Drift do on screen, this is where you're truly going to see some black magic. The way this thing turns from a pretty cool Bugatti into a samurai sword wielding robot is phenomenal. Now I never received any instructions with mine as this was a pre-production sample so I will try my absolute best to showcase the transformation in as much detail as possible but just bear in mind that there may be some differences between how I transform it and how the figure is intended Tended to be transformed. So, with all that being said, let's kickstart the transformation.
and after that mind-blowing, incredibly intricate transformation, here we have the Metagate Haiku fully transformed up into his incredible looking robot mode. And I think besides any of those two and a half thousand pound Prime 1 studio statues, without a shadow of a doubt, this is by far the best version of Transformers 4 Drift that we've ever seen. And the fact that this thing transforms easily makes it one of the most ambitious third party pieces that I own in my entire collection. Now we'll jump straight here into the details and this thing's just remarkable, especially the back. I don't think I've ever been amazed as much by a backpack as I have been by this figure. This thing just looks exactly how it did on screen and you really wouldn't think that it could transform. The intricate mechanical detail that we've got going on here for this section just looks incredible. This is so faithful to the movie that it's actually unreal. I think the paintwork just looks so nicely done. You can see all of that terrific looking sculpt work. We do actually get the katana blades sticking out to the sides. I think the way the arms have been designed, even here from a back perspective, looks so faithful to the movie. They've even gone to the extra extent of kind of including these spring-loaded components which eject during robot mode just to fill out the back of the arms, which I think is so nicely done. The butt also has been completely painted and sculpted. And as you guys can see here for the back of the legs, we've also got some very nice detail. Even the subtle sculpt work here of some hydraulics and shocks, I just think is so cool. Now, of course, as we flip around here to the front, this is where the figure really shines. So the head sculpt just looks beautiful. In Transformers 4, Michael Bay did go incredibly heavy on that almost humanoid aesthetic for the Transformers, which I know wasn't to everybody's personal preference. Loyalty is but a flower in the winds of fear and temptation. But here for Drift, I actually think he was one of the coolest looking Autobots, and you can definitely see some of those samurai traits, such as in terms of the helmet design, and here for the shoulder pads, but as we just take a closer look here, at that facial sculpt, my goodness, all of those intricate panels that we have for the mouthpiece just looks terrific. Even the back of the head has been fully painted as well as sculpted. We do get the Bugatti logo section here for the chest. Now granted, this is a faux piece. I believe the real front of the Bugatti ends up somewhere down here in the butt, but it looks so cool, very proportionate in regards to the rest of the robot mode. And I think here for the forearms, we are dealing with an asymmetrical design, but this just looks terrific. The amount of silver paint that we have here looks so nicely done even the blue details for the back of the hand looks fantastic and as we just flip our attention here to this side you can see some nice golden and blue highlights and the samurai plating that we have here for the thighs yet again just looks incredible i really do like these almost electric blue highlights that we can see scattered throughout the entire figure it really does help to make certain parts pop and overall, I mean, come on, that is just so cool. As we take a look here at the legs, it's quite actually horrifying how many components are packed into this, but the way it comes together is just remarkable. It's actually quite a simplistic transformation, but I'd say there's about 50 different components that are actually packed into these legs. It's just so nicely done. As you guys can see, we actually get the correct orientation of the wheels, which are situated on the inside of the leg, much like in the movie. I think these panels all look so nicely done and even the foot design is terrific. Now you are also dealing with an asymmetrical transformation for the feet due to the way he'll convert for the helicopter mode, but they just look so cool. I just think this is such a fantastic figure. Now we do get some faux pieces. I believe this here is supposed to be one of the tires, which is actually packed away on the inside of the leg, but I don't think it looks bad at all. It actually comes across very nicely in person. Now articulation sadly is where I have a few qualms. So in regards to the head, due to the shape of the helmet, you are quite restricted as this section does have a tendency to bump into these back neck brace pieces, which kind of limits the range of motion looking up unless you take the head and shift it forward there is a slight cutout which does allow for a much greater range of motion but when you do that I've got to be honest and say the neck doesn't look the greatest so you do win some and lose some in regards to the head poseability it can look left to right slightly as well as rotate the full 360 so that's really cool we do get a full rotation here at the shoulder a hinge joint out to the side butterfly joints mainly due to transformation but they're really effective especially when we bring in some of the larger swords we do get a bicep rotation which is really nice done as well as a double joint at the elbow mainly due to transformation but that can curl to a fantastic range and sadly no form of wrist rotation that is really the only point where I think this figure is majorly lacking in but you can kind of cheat that as the forearms are on a swivel so if you really wanted to you can rotate the forearm but nothing beats an actual proper wrist rotation so I do wish that was something they could have included the four fingers are conjoined so they will hinge out together but are articulated at two points so you can kind of bend the tips here independently 
independently and the thumb is on a ball joint as well as a hinge joint. The waist can rotate the full 360 completely unhindered which I thought was awesome and we also do get a fantastic app crunch although you'll have to be weary of this connection which does have a tendency to detach so just get a grip of that and as you guys can see it will crunch forwards very nicely. The thigh pads are spring loaded so they will actually shoot down to allow for a slightly better range of motion. Truth be told this is also quite limited and I don't actually want to dent or scuff up any of the gold paint but this should bend I'd say roughly to 75 degrees honestly you can't really get it pushing past that point without potentially damaging the sculpt but they will kick out I'd say roughly to that far so yet again not the greatest range if I'm going to be honest but they can kick back slightly we do get a great range here out of the knee which is on a double joint so that can bend way past 90 and then we also do get a slight thigh rotation and finally for the foot due to transformation this can pivot forwards and backwards as well as rock all the way to the side to an excellent extent so overall the articulation is decent but I would have loved to have seen a much greater range out of the hips and definitely a wrist rotation for this guy especially considering that he is a samurai sword wielding robot. Now in addition to the pair of swords that we've already got attached onto the back, Drift also includes a larger pair which are definitely my favourite accessories. I think the painting and the sculpting on these in particular looks so nicely done. I really also like the wrap detail that we have around the handle and surprisingly despite them looking identical here in the sword mode, due to how they integrate for the helicopter mode the transformations are actually quite different now in regards to their integration as per tradition with almost masterpiece style figures we do get a slot here on the inside of the palm that the tab will just snap into so you just want to ensure that that is pegged firmly into place you can wrap the hands around and there is drift with one of these swords I think looking really nicely done and due to the way the hands transform for Bugatti mode you can also angle the wrist down to create some of those really cool samurai poses now alternatively if you didn't wish to actually have them displayed in the hands you can flip your attention here to the back take these sections here and actually fold them down and as you can see there are two tiny little hollow cutouts here at the base that basically these pegs are going to snap into so you will just want to snap that section in there and then we can rinse and repeat the same process here for this side so just snap this one in as well and there we have all of the swords stored on drifts back much like we saw in that transformers 4 movie which personally is my favorite preferred look for this guy i've always been a huge fan of all of these swords sticking out of the back it really does help to sell that almost samurai aesthetic that michael bay was going for in that transformers 4 movie and i mean come on he just looks so nicely done now as we talk comparison this is really where i only have one big issue with this guy and that he's out of scale with pretty much any of the other figures that you'd want to display him with so here we have him alongside the official Takara Tomi MPM Bumblebee and in terms of official to third party ratio he's way out of scale you cannot have this guy alongside some of those official masterpiece figures without there being quite a big issue in terms of what characters are supposed to be bigger or smaller than one another so that's unfortunate but it's even a bigger shame to see that the scale issue carries on even into a third party versus third party comparison so here we have him alongside DX9 slash unique toys La Haya. Drift is actually bigger than Hot Rod, who was quite a tall character in the movie. You have to bear in mind, he was a Lamborghini when in comparison to a Bugatti Veyron. So that is a shame. I do wish that the designers could have maybe made him just a little bit smaller so that he could have scaled better with some of these almost masterpiece-esque figures. Here he is alongside the Unique Toys Perukil, aka Transformers for Lockdown, an official Unique Toys Optimus Prime mold, that being their version of Nemesis Prime. And then finally, the KO and upscale of Unique Toys Challenger. And I think this is probably the only figure that I own in my collection that looks vaguely okay standing side by side here with this drift. He's just so big. I think it's probably because they packed so much into him engineering wise. They didn't want to make the transformation even more fiddly and intricate than it already is. So I can understand it from that perspective, but it is just a shame to see that he is pretty much bigger than anything that you'd really want to have a pretty cohesive display of. But overall, I believe that just about wraps it up here for the robot mode. In all, a fantastic looking figure. In terms of the design, it looks so accurate to the movie. I think the articulation for the most part is pretty decent. I would have loved to have seen the integration of some wrist rotation and definitely a better range out of the hips but detail and paint wise he looks terrific and of course considering this guy is a triple changer we still have one last mode to get to that being the helicopter mode which we see incredibly briefly when Optimus Prime does unite with the Autobots in that Transformers 4 movie. So let's transform this guy into that mode and then of course we'll take a closer look.
and when in contrast to the transformation from Bugatti into robot mode, here we have drift from robot into helicopter mode and it's actually relatively straightforward. I wasn't expecting it to be nowhere near as simplistic as it actually is, although I've got to be honest and say the helicopter mode definitely doesn't look nowhere near as cool looking as that Bugatti because to be quite frank, in the movie not only don't we get a great look of it, but it didn't really look like a great helicopter anyhow, so I do think they did a good job. I mean, at least they tried to give him all three modes and I mean, it looks enough like what we see very briefly in the film. So as we take a look here at the front, of course, this is supposed to be the cockpit. It's comprised out of many different components. So you're always gonna get that kind of ugly broken look. I have tried to conjoin the halves as best as I possibly can. Like I mentioned previously, I didn't get any instructions with this, so I could be doing something wrong. But from what I can tell, the transformation appears to be pretty much spot on. We do now get these new missile pods, which I think look pretty cool. They do stick out to the sides and overall it looks like the shape of the helicopter that's what I'll say it's a jumbled mess that looks like the shape of the helicopter it doesn't really have any specific details here it really does just look like drifts kind of falling over half transformed and then died but I do like the way the swords come together to form the rotor blade I thought that was a really good use of some of those excess accessories and overall that looks pretty sweet I do like the detail that we saw on the back now here at the top and this can actually spin which I wasn't expecting and then we do get the tail rotor blade which is circular very abstract in terms of design I've never really seen anything like this personally but I do like the way this has come out it doesn't actually spin so that's unfortunate and I thought it was a great reuse of some of those swords to actually create the supports here for the helicopter mode that is fantastic I really like how that's come out so overall it's nicely done a few things that are worth mentioning however is that it doesn't stay together all that well the tabs which are here in the legs that peg into that chest piece do have a tendency to become very easily detached and the majority of the underside is solely resting here on this tab as at least on my copy not even this one goes all the way into the forearm so that's unfortunate but as you guys can see I am giving it a good old shake and it does appear to be holding up pretty okay so it's a decent throwaway mode nothing spectacular I believe these pieces are supposed to be pushed up as well I guess it's all right and overall I mean it's pretty awesome that this thing actually is a proper triple changing version of Drift from Transformers 4. And so some final thoughts for the Metagate Haigu Transformers 4 Age of Extinction Drift. Overall, this is an outstanding piece. I think in regards to the Bugatti and the robot mode, they look for the most part incredible. The Bugatti does have a few panel lines, but that's to be expected with any Transformer figure, to be honest, especially one that is as complex as this guy. I think all of the Bugatti details are definitely there. Of course, they've had to leave some details off to avoid any licensing issues, but the colors all appear to be almost spot on to how it appeared in the movie. I like the rubberized tires. I think the rims look fantastic. It holds together very nicely. Incredibly weighty due to some of the die cast pieces that we have in this guy. And overall, it's a very nice alt mode. I do also like the rear spoiler, although it is an absolute pain in the butt to deploy. So that is something worth watching out for. The transformation going from Bugatti into robot mode isn't that difficult, especially if you do apply some kind of lubricant to those slidey pin joints. But going back from robot into Bugatti mode is an absolute nightmare. And sadly, I don't know how this guy is going to come packaged when he gets to you. All I know is that mine come in the Bugatti mode, so I'm hoping that's how he's packaged so that you guys can follow along with this transformation tutorial. I think the robot mode is remarkable from a visual perspective. It looks outstanding. The best version of drift that we've ever seen from Transformers 4. I do have a few issues in regards to articulation. Considering that he is supposed to be a sword-wielding samurai, I definitely would have liked to have seen a wrist rotation and definitely a way better range out of those hips as they are quite compromised, which is a shame. But the bot mode holds together very nicely. I think the accessories, the katanas and everything are really well done. And the transformation into the helicopter mode, it's very simplistic and I guess rather effective. Like I said previously, we don't really get a great look of this helicopter in the film and the very brief glimpse that we do see of it. This does look vaguely familiar and reminiscent of that. So I can't complain all that much. It is a nice almost throwaway bonus mode in my opinion. And it does resemble that of an almost Cybertronian helicopter. So that's neat, although it doesn't hold together the best. So that is something worth of mentioning but overall definitely a very nice third party figure for those who are a fan of the character and the character design then I think undeniably this is the best figure that you can pick up for that guy I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below as mentioned previously if you are looking to add this guy to the collection I'll be sure to include a pre-order link down in the description box below and a massive thank you to Show Z for sending this sample my way here for a review I thank you all so much for watching and until my next review I'll see you then thanks for watching